In this video, we're gonna take a look at this brand new plugin called the RC20. Now, this is designed for adding that vintage vibe to your production. So it could be used on individual drum sounds or individual elements, but I'm gonna demonstrate it on the master section so things are super obvious, it's really clear to hear what's going on. At the moment this is disengaged, I'm gonna play you a little musical idea. What I'm gonna do is just drop in over here. Have a listen. So remember the effect is not engaged at the moment. This is just the track in its original state. So what I'm gonna do, beginning of the next eight bar section, is turn this on, get ready. sounds different. Let's listen to the original again. Get ready. So what I'm hearing there on that default preset is that it does sound a little bit thinner. It sounds kind of brasher. Um, it sounds rougher. It sounds older, you know, so instantly out of that preset. It's sounding, it has a particular character. So there's some presets here. I'm just going to drop it down so you can see. Whole list of these. And um, what I'm gonna do is basically, let me just work out how to deselect, there we go. Um, I'm gonna take you through a little tour of these, all right? So we'll have a listen. I'll run it for maybe a couple of bars for each one, all right? So back to the first one. So, you know, it's getting a little bit silly really in terms of the demo there, because some of these are clearly not meant for the whole track. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back to that initialized preset. So we're gonna start from scratch here. So I'm gonna take you through this. It flows from left to right in terms of the signal flow. And the noise can actually be set post. Okay, so right at the very end, there's a switch for that. And so if you wanted to make that the last element in the signal chain, you can. I'm gonna turn it on, and you can see now this section is activated. So let's take a look at what we got. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna bring the noise up. So this is like a level control. All right, so have a listen. This is the vinyl noise. Just really making that obvious there. That's a little tone control. So essentially that's like a low pass filter and it's kind of opening up and then closing. Then again, it may be a high shelf EQ. They may be boosting. And cutting, all right, but I haven't read the documentation, so you know, at the end of the day, brighter, duller, all right, that's the way it works. The routing, like I said, you can place this at the very end of the signal chain if you've got other slots engaged. We've also got the ability to follow the rhythm, um, so this is like an envelope follower, and that's really intriguing because it sounds like it's a sampled kick drum that has a bit of vinyl noise on it, so that's a really great thing for adding texture. So you can really, um get some benefit on certain beats with that. The other thing is that you can apply ducking. So this is whenever the kick drum hits, it's gonna bring the volume down of the vinyl noise. You might have to bring the level up to compensate. That adds a really interesting kind of breathing texture. You know, if you're after that kind of grainy, kind of lo-fi kind of vibe that can work well. Now, at the bottom of every single one of these is a thing called Flux, and this is almost like some kind of randomization thing that adds a little bit of chaos. So I'm gonna put this up and uh, let's have a listen. Let's take the ducking off. Take that noise down. Take it off. It feels like there's a bit more movement on there. So that's the first 
vinyl noise and these appear to be samples let's just check the next one now that's really nice actually this is starting to take on a uh, kind of masters at work kind of texture okay so look um, let me just check a couple more So some really interesting little textures there. Quite like that vinyl too. Okay, so the next one is called Wobble. And what this does is it basically brings subtle pitch variations. And um, you know, on old tape machines, if they were worn, you used to get a bit of this. So you've got this uh, slider between Wow and Flutter. You've got the speed of each in rotary controls here. You've got the ability to add a stereo width. I'm not going to suggest using that over the whole track because that could sound a little bit mad. It might mean that the bottom end just gets a bit messy, but maybe I'll demonstrate that. And we've also got a mix control here, which is really quite handy, so you can uh, adjust how much of that you want to come through. Let's bring this up. Let's have a listen. So basically, listen to the musical elements, so the bass line and the chords, and uh, we should hear some pitch variation. Ha! <laughs> Speed this, or we'll slow this down. Now, do you know what? I'm actually quite a fan of that kind of thing. Because what it does is adds a little kind of twist. It makes things feel almost a little bit more organic, certainly if you've programmed stuff yourselves. Let's try that stereo control. Yeah, not so good on this. But I've got to say, if that was an isolated part, like a keyboard part, putting that stereo on there could actually be beneficial. And you'll hear that in the little demonstration that I did last night of this plugin. But this is obviously the more detailed video. So um, let's put a bit of flux in and see how that feels. Whoa, that thing sounds drunk. Okay, let me bring this down. But you know what, imagine automating these. You know, there's, a, there's probably a bunch of fun to be had really twisting stuff up. So I think I'm happy with that. Now the next one, distort, obviously is uh, distortion. There are lots of different engines to run this through. Um, let's have a listen to the first one. Um, it's called Iron. Wow, that, you know, <laughs> I do get kind of overexcited about these things sometimes. Now that sounds almost like it's on um, like an old cassette tape now. Um, I know there is a, a magnetic rack kind of device here which is designed for that, emulating that tape vibe, but Something about that distortion there really feels um, like tape. Maybe that's um, giving us a clue there, this iron. Maybe it's like some kind of, um, I remember cassette tapes having the word iron on them sometimes. So anyway, let's have a listen again. There's a real nice bottom end thump there um, that I'm liking. And just for context, let's take this off. Yeah, really enjoying that, um, that's great. I mean, you know, there's, there's other distortion engines to check out here. Um, let's just flip through them. I'll tell you what, maybe I need to make this a little bit more obvious. It depends on your monitoring conditions and how well tuned your ears are. Oh, by the way, there is an EQ here, so that you can see that you can actually roll off the bass if you wanted. But that's one of the things I really liked about that. So let me just reduce this, um, get it back to where it was. I think it's something like that. Now, if you want a bit of digital distortion, um, you can do this. And for me personally, I don't think this is really gonna match um, what I'm doing with the rest of it, but let's have a listen. This is like a bit crusher. So rate, sample rate and bit depth, I'm assuming. Smoothing feels like some kind of EQ. So yeah, bit crushing, I don't really feel that that works on this one. Now, let me check this one out. So space is like a reverb, okay? And we can apply this um, at certain frequencies, which is really handy if you're doing it over the whole mix. So let's have a listen and see how that feels. Maybe just 
just take it on those highs. Extend the decay. A really interesting like high-end fizz there. I'd argue that was a bit too much. Like. See how that feels there. And this bypass. A little bit too much. I think this track kind of feels like it needs to be a little bit sparser. So anyway, that's uh, something you can add as well. Add a bit more kind of color to it. And then finally this magnetic, which is, um, you know, this has got a real kind of tape kind of vibe to it. And once again, we've got a couple of parameters here that are cross-faded, wear and flutter. And um, let's have a listen to this. Now this really feels like it's running onto like a cassette tape or something like that. Um, let's just reduce that. Dropouts. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, so that's almost like there's something wrong with the tape um, and the signal is dropping out. So yeah, I don't really think that that's part of this one. But I think I've got myself a real nice set of parameters there. There's some stuff we could do down here. Maybe just lift out the highs. So that's before, and then after. So yeah, I would save that as a preset. I'm just gonna drop this down and I'm gonna call it Danny Vintage 01. Save that, and I can use all of those together in the future. So that was a little tour of the RC20, and um, this is a great plugin. I'll put links underneath um, so you can go and check it out for yourselves.